On this fourth Sunday of Advent, now entering into the final days of our Advent season, leading us straight up into Christmas, our gospel today proclaims for us the beauty of that encounter between Elizabeth and our Blessed Mother Mary. And it's such a, a powerful scene to reflect on these two women who are aglow in pregnancy, prepared for all that the Lord has done for them and is going to do through them. These two holy children that are already present, not yet born, in Christ and John the Baptist, who will make a transforming effect on the world, to say the least, will change the whole course of human history, with, of course, John the Baptist preparing the way for the coming of Christ, and, of course, Christ being that Savior, the one who is Emmanuel, God, who has come among us. And today in the Gospel today, we have the very first time that Mary is venerated by another person, that Elizabeth says that she is, in fact, honored to be in the presence of, of Mary and, of course, of Jesus as well. But to recognize that from these very early days, Mary is already being honored and venerated as the mother of the Lord uh, by Elizabeth. And so there's many, many beautiful things we could look at and reflect on with this passage. But as we enter these final days of Advent, I'll take three aspects, which I, I took from a, another article about this weekend's readings, to sp speak about how Mary can show us these three aspects of ways we can prepare ourselves to receive the Lord at Christmas. And those are courage, compassion, and trusting in the Lord. Mary shows courage, compassion, and how to trust more deeply in the Lord. And we see this at work throughout the course of her life and throughout the scriptures when it speaks about her life. There can be no courage without fear. So it means that, of course, fear is a part of every human being, all of our stories. And yet, from the time that the angel Gabriel speaks to her, we know that she is told not to fear. And so she has courage. Even though she continues to have fears, she turns to what the Lord is calling her to, recognizing the courage that she is called to to offer so that she can do what the Lord is asking her to do. And so it, all of us, it takes courage for us to, to follow Christ. And it certainly takes courage to be a saint, to enter into the difficulties, the challenges of our lives, to enter into the relationships that are difficult. Anything that we have to deal with Nevertheless, this Advent season, and reflecting on Mary in this Advent season, helps us to know that uh, Advent is a reminder to us that grace is always more powerful than sin. That despite all that is wrong in the world, we know that the Lord's grace is always more powerful than the sin of our world, and the sin of our own lives, or the, the mess of our own lives. And so Mary can help give us courage. She, of course, also shows us great compassion. As we know that she, in today's gospel, goes to visit Elizabeth, goes to be with her. She cares for those who are in need. We think about the story of the wedding at Cana, when she was concerned about the couple whose, whose wine had run out at the wedding celebration and asked Jesus to act. So she's a woman of great compassion. As last week we heard, or last week we would have celebrated Our Lady of Guadalupe last Sunday, except it was... Uh, taken over by the third Sunday of Advent, but uh, our Mary, our Mary famously said to Saint Juan Diego, uh, who she appeared to as Our Lady of Guadalupe, "Am I not here, your mother? Am I not under your under? Are you not under my shadow and protection? Am I not the fountain of your joy? Am I not in the fold of your? Of my, are you not in the fold of my mantle and the cradle of my arms? Do not grieve or be disturbed by anything." And so Mary comes to us with that great compassion reminding us not to be disturbed by anything in our lives, but to trust in the Lord. And that's the third aspect I'm going to speak of today, is, is trusting in the Lord. Of course, it says a couple times in Luke's Gospel that Mary took these things and pondered them in her heart. So she developed that faith and that trust in all that the Lord was doing. Even in the times of confusion and difficulty, for example, the Gospel we'll hear next Sunday for Holy Family Sunday, will be the one where Jesus lost in the temple. 
And even though she was certainly fearful of having lost the Lord, she continued to to recognize that she had to trust in the Lord and eventually first found Christ in the temple. But another beautiful thing that we could do in these last days of Advent and into the Christmas season is to reflect on the prayer that follows just after our reading, gospel reading today, which had stopped before it would have gone into what we call the Magnificat, Mary's prayer that she offers. Uh, and, and it's such a beautiful prayer that we pray. In fact, every uh, evening, those who pray what we call the Liturgy of the Hours in the church, including all priests and religious, they pray the Magnificat every evening, uh, Mary's words uh, that begin, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. So she has that great trust and that great uh, thankfulness in all that the Lord has done for her in the course of her life. And so we ask Mary to help us with courage, compassion, and trust. And our three meditations for this, this week. A meditation on courage. What is my greatest fear? I ask now, I bring that to Mary and ask Mary to help give me courage. The second meditation, compassion. What is hardest, who is hardest for, for me to be compassionate to right now? Who's the person I'm struggling to be compassionate to? I take that person to Mary, and I ask Mary to help me be compassionate to them. And our third meditation on trust. What area of my life am I striving too hard, meaning I'm trying to do something on my own effort and not asking for the help of God? Whatever it is, I need to trust more to the Lord in my life. I take this and ask Mary to show it to me and help me to have a deeper trust in the Lord.